Hi, I'm the woodpecker today. Yes, I'm showing how I did my pulls. As promised, I'm going to show you how I made the 10 pulls on my chest of drawers. As you can see, only two are similar and it's what I wanted because I wanted to see which one will look the best in the end. Yes, I could have just turned some pulls like the rest of the shop. Uh, those pulls only take 20 minutes to turn. This would have been much faster but I wanted something different. So I'm going to use this leftover piece of cherry from my vanity countertop. The first thing to do is to surface and cut a square block. Then I cut it in half. This will be my first two pulls. Next step, find their center. After tracing a circle, I can easily find the exact spot where the fence need to be to cut all the corners. Then I can turn this blank round. In fact, it doesn't really need to be round. I only need to have one end with a diameter of exactly 65 millimeters. <laughs> this will become clearer later on. Then it's time to turn the blank around, turn the rest round, and cut a smaller tenon at the other end. Uh, yes, this is necessary to be able to check it on my fourth axis. Finally, I can use it for something useful. And now that it's in place, I can cut a pull. Everything started with this SketchUp pull design I made. But to be able to carve this on the CNC, I need to use Aspire in its rotary mode. So after entering the size of my workplace, specify that zero position is on the surface of the cylinder. Yes, the 65 meters that I turn. Specify that the initial position is in the center. I can import my SketchUp file. Here it is. Okay, I don't have a lot to do. I scale down my model so it will fit inside the piece of wood I'm using and give it a small rotation and that's it. This rotation ensure that the front of the pull will be in the center of the design, just here. So after changing the combined mode of the pull, I can give a base height of 8 mm to the zero plane. This will create a central axis for the carving. And that's what the CNC will carve. It's just missing the tool paths. I'm beginning with the roughing pass. This is the easy pass. I select a quarter bit inch and press calculate. And here's what the roughing pass will look like. Uh, this is a nice start, but the surface is quite a bit rough. It's time for the finishing pass. Uh, but it's useless to make the finishing pass everywhere. I add a frame around the pool. And with this frame, I can specify to make the finishing pass with the same bit with a step over of 10% instead of 40, but only inside the frame. And here's what the pool should look like. I save it and return to the CNC. There I place the router bit to the right height, move it to the center of the pool, and I can carve my first one. Okay, this is obviously fast forwarded, because in fact, this actually takes four hours to finish the job. And here's the final result. <laughs> Not bad. Mm, but I don't like the frills everywhere. 
So for the next one, I'll use a ball nose router bit instead of an end mill. And off I go again, for another 4 hours. Yes, it's long and noisy. These are my first two pulls. Uh, you'll notice that just here I have this. Okay, this is because this pull took way more than four hours to carve. I had to start it twice and the second time I wasn't exactly at the same place as the first time. Uh, this was because one of the winding of my palm rotter burned. I had to buy a new one to complete the job. And to finish it, I'm going to use carafts from my vanity countertop. I still have the sinkholes. It's a good place to use this. But I have to separate the oak from the cherry. After ripping this to the right size, I cut the round ends. But I have a small problem with the oak pieces. They are long enough for a pull, uh, but not long enough for the CNC setup. I need to add support. To do so, I use a piece of firewood. First thing to do is to cut it square on six faces. Next, I remove the corners and turn it like both ends of a pull blank. After cutting this in two, it's time to glue them to a piece of oak. If you think that hot glue won't hold, well, think again. This will be perfect. After re-gluing this, I turn it rounder. Then it's time to carve another pull. The cherry pieces are longer, so it's easier. I even found out that if I turn between points, it's even more easier. I can cut the tenon without turning the blank around. But it still takes four hours on the CNC. Now I have the first five pulls with nothing on them. Yes, I know, simple pulls like those took too much time on the CNC. But for the next one, it will be different because I want some relief on the rest of the poles. Exactly like those three. But to make those small details, I need to switch bit during the carving. And those don't take four hours to carve, but rather six hours. But to add relief, I have a couple more operations to do. First, I need to import the 3D object I want to add. After putting it in place, I'm not done. Because if you look at the 3D pool, you can see that my logo is squished. That's because it's a rotary carving. I need to scale the height by half of pi. So I scale the logo to 157%. And now it's perfect. I'm only missing the tool paths. The roughing pass is exactly the same as the last time. In fact, the only difference we can see is that the front has small bumps on it. Then I do the exact same thing I did last time for the finishing pass. Here we can see my logo, but it can be better. Now it's time to make it better. The first thing I do is to create a vector boundary around the logo. When it's done, I offset it by 3 millimeters. And now with this vector selected, I can make a new finishing pass. But this time with a half millimeter ball nose router bit. And now this will be the final result. I just need to save two files. One for each router bit size I'm going to use. And these are the last two poles being carved. I'm never tired of seeing this going. It's probably just because I made my own fourth axis. And those are all my pulls. At the end, we can see the three mishap I had. Eh, not bad, I was expecting way more. 
but most of the wood ended up on the floor and on the table. And now on the plane poles, I can burn something. <laughs> I'm happy, but I forgot to sand it before I started the burning process. I was too excited. I won't make the same mistake for the other four. And here are the last two designs I've made. Okay, I only made three laser burning designs. Those are all my poles. But I still need to make a finger cavity. To make the jig, I use my first pull test and trace its shape on a piece of plywood. Then I make another offset line inside. Okay, my offset line looks like crap. I trace it again. I need two pieces this side, so I cut them from the same piece of plywood. I also need to mark the placement of the pull screws and drill both pieces together. I also drill smaller holes, so I'll be able to screw those pieces together and screw them. Now, with both of them screwed together, I cut the fingers shape. and make the cut smoother. Uh, but I'm not done. I need a third tier to this jig, the exterior shape of a pool. And when it's exactly the same shape as the pool, I place it over the first piece and drill two holes. Then I can glue and add screws to this new top layer. The last thing to take care of is that all the signs are the same size. And now I can finally finish my pose. The first thing I do is remove this. When the pool is to my liking, I place it inside the jing, turn it around, drill some holes and screw it in place. I also need to screw the spacer at the bottom. And finally, I'm ready to remove some wood. When the first pass is done, I remove the spacer and make the final pass. Finally, I sand the inside of the pole and route a small round over inside. And the first pull is done. I only need to do this nine more times. But on the poles with carvings, I still need to hand carve the transition between the two kinds of router bit. Okay, on some of them, the small router bit was set a bit too deep. The very last thing I do is to spray two coats of varnish. And here are my 10 pools ready to be installed. To install them, I use the spacer to figure out the placement of the screws. And here they are. I really like them. Some of them I like more than others. I would really like to know which one or ones you like. I hope you enjoyed this episode, even if it was a lot of CNC. And see you soon for another episode of The Woodpecker.